Hello, how are you? Today, in this video, I want to talk about uh, the car accident that was in a couple of years ago and how being deaf played a factor in how my treatment was going, at least on that first night when the actual accident happened. So, in 2014, uh, the night before Halloween, I was supposed to go to my I was supposed to go to a restaurant uh, to meet my friend and we were going to have dinner. It was around 5 o'clock, 5.30, something like that. And I went into my truck. It was a big truck. A Ford X something, whatever truck. It was big. And, uh, you know, I'm going on my way. And just, I want to say two minutes, maybe two minutes up the road. Uh, I had to stop real quick because there is a stop sign around that area, but there's also like a little hill that goes. So if you're going this way, if I'm going this way, there's a hill up that goes up here. So people are wanting to, you know, kind of go up this way or no. Okay, in this line, somebody at the very front of this line wanted to go up that hill. So we had to stop. Naturally, you're supposed to do that. That's the law. And so we did that. And just before I got there, when when you're going that way on that road, there is a cemetery. There's a cemetery, a road, and then like this empty parking lot. And as I was driving, there was a guy there that was just being very strange and he backed up very, very fast. This was a guy that lo that looked to be the same age as me. Just maybe a couple years younger. I think he was a couple years younger. Yeah, he was like barely 20. I'm 25 now. Although when it happened, that was a couple years earlier. But anyway, so long story short, this guy was very, very high on weed. And he was driving and he crashed into me. And before that happened, I was thinking this guy is so weird. He was backing up very quickly and he crashed into me. So, that's how I got into the car accident. Damage to his car was very, very bad. Damage to my truck was not so bad except for on the bed. But it was still enough that we had to trash the truck. So, I go to the hospital. First, we have the ambulance come over. The paramedics are here. And as I've explained to the police, I've explained to the neighbor who I ended up hitting after I got hit. Uh, hi. Deaf, I'm gonna need you to call 911, and hey, cop, I'm gonna need you to, you know, point or write or whatever. Same with the paramedics. And the paramedics were pretty, you know, they were pretty okay. And, um, I get, like, strapped in to this bed thing on the, in the ambulance because my back's hurting a little bit. I, I've had back problems for over a decade now, so the crash didn't help. And I get to the hospital, and this is where all hell breaks loose. Because I had these big old towel rolls attached to uh, the side of my head. And when you have that covering my ears, the rest of the residual hearing that I have, right, is gone. I mean, if I hear anything, it's going to be so small and so muffled it's going to sound like I'm underwater right like it already sounds like I'm underwater but now even more so and I the paramedics told the doctors and the nurses I was I couldn't hear very well I was deaf right and then I told them and I told them to write their questions down because I am in a hospital and I am not going to risk anything bad happening this is not going to be the episode of switch that for where I'm going to die or almost nearly die because you might have tried to give me a medicine that I'd be allergic to, right? It would have ended very, very badly. And no matter, honestly, no matter how many times I told them I don't know what they're saying, they just ignore the fact that I don't know what's being said and they keep talking. And all I could think about is, are you seriously doing this? You are denying or ignoring my right to have this form of communication. I'm not fluent in ASL. I can't get an interpreter. I won't do me any good. Not at that time. So you need to write it down. You need to point to your questions. 
because when they had asked me something, I said the completely wrong answer because I thought they were asking me something completely different, right? So that could have been a terrible situation. And after a while, it just finally got to that point. And I just do this now. I, I will give you, I give hearing people the benefit of the doubt about three times, okay? First, I let them know, hey, my deaf, please write this. And if they don't do it, I remind them again. And then I remind them a third time that they still don't get it. But I'm going to be a little ever so slightly annoyed. And then by that time, if they still try to pull something, if they still try to tell me that they're going to do it their way instead of the deaf person's way, instead of giving me the proper communication method, I get angry. And I don't like being angry, okay? But sometimes you have to do it. Because that's the only time that they're going to listen to you. And I feel like if I'm at a hospital, you need to listen to me. So I got to the point where I actually started, not like screaming, like this is the episode of Jerry Springer. But I got very loud and I was like, yo, I'm deaf. That means I can't understand you. I am in a hospital and it is my right that you do this the way I need you to do it. Otherwise, you could possibly kill me, and then you're going to get sued, right? It worked for a little bit until then I went into the actual doctor's office, and then the doctor did the same spiel all over again. So after that all happened, I went and I filed a complaint, right? And uh, I guess the the main boss guy of the, dep the department, he sent me an email. He apologized. And then they offered to uh, let me come over and talk to their staff for a staff meeting. And needless to say, that never happened. And then instead they offered, or they told me that they weren't going to be able to have me come over. But instead, uh, they would let me be part of a newsletter that they were writing. Needless to say, it took the person in charge like two or three months to get back to me. And then by then, I... It just never happened because I felt like that was way too long and no matter how many times I emailed them during those two months that the person apparently went missing and didn't contact me. I don't know. So there are probably a lot of things I could have done between now or then and now. Um, but what I'm actually going to do now is because I started uh, contacting local schools to try to bring some deaf awareness. I'm doing the same thing with my local police officers police uh fire stations and i'm gonna go back to that hospital i'm gonna say something and try to offer something and i'm gonna do it with another hospital and frankly i have plans to start local and then try to branch out into the entire country maybe maybe even the world maybe i'm getting a little ahead of myself i don't know but if you are if you are hearing and you are a nurse you are a doctor the number one tip i want to give you right now that you really need to know about is you need to listen to your patients. You need to listen to your deaf patients. Don't do what Miami Hospital did and refuse an interpreter for a pregnant woman twice. I think it was two times or three times. And you remember one of the guys, I don't remember which hospital this was, but he died. He was deaf and he died because of miscommunication problems. That wasn't even his fault. This is, this is a serious matter to those of you that work in the ER and the hospital, even family doctors. This is a serious matter, okay? You could risk someone's life. You could kill them. You could injure them. And you don't want that. So, moral of the story is listen to us, okay? Because we know what's best. And we want to be well. That is your job. Uh -huh. So, just remember that. Anyways, uh, that's it for today's story. I will see you later. Bye.